children now we are going to revise the lesson animal fiber okay are you ready come on let's start so animal fiber as you know well that about the fibers uh, there are two types natural and artificial fibers isn't it so the natural fibers are the fibers which we get from the nature from plants and animals too isn't it so plant fibers are as you know coconut cotton jute these are the natural plant fibers see here children cotton jute gongura aloe vera and coconut so these are the fibers that we get which we get naturally next coming to the animal fibers the fibers that which we get from the animals as silk and wool you know well isn't it we get silk from the silk worms and wool from sheep you know well and other animals also like goat camel and yak also produce wool for us so now we'll see mainly about the silk animal fibers silk and wool okay children so in this lesson you are going to deal about the animal fibers that is silk and wool we get silk from silk worms and wool from sheep goat camel and yak so what how do what are the different steps that are involved in the manufacture of a silk fabric from silk worms and also how do you get woolen fabric from the wool that is obtained from sheep okay so that is that which we going to learn in this lesson okay children let's start see children here the life cycle of silk worm it involves four stages life cycle of silk worm involves four stages see the picture here clearly so this this is the first stage egg stage eggs stages of larva pupa and adult stage so life cycle of silk worm involves four stages before entering into the manufacturing of the silk from the silk worm as you know that we get silk from the silk worm first we'll see the stages of silk worm in its life cycle it involves how many stages children it involves four stages they are egg larva pupa and imago see the picture clearly eggs larval stages pupa stages and this is a imago or adult so this is also called as an imago stage or adult stage so if you see at what stage do of the silk worm do we get silk before entering into the main idea of the topic first we will know how our the silk worm moves from its all stages so before getting the silk the silk manufacturers so they generally get the silk worm eggs from the seed growing centers these seed growing centers are called as greenages what are they called as children they are called as greenages seed growing centers are called as greenages they are the places where the silk moth which are ready to lay eggs are sold from there they keep these eggs on a very mesh wire mesh make to make them grow into the larval stage when they keep them on the bed of mulberry leaves because silk worms feed on mulberry leaves their food is mulberry leaves finely chopped mulberry leaves are placed in lot sized cane frames they are called as a chandrikalu so these are the terms that you have to be familiar in this lesson so they keep these mulberry leaves on a lot sized cane frames called as chandrikalu later so normally a female silk moth when lays most about 500 eggs in one go and it dies 500 egg in one go and it dies and these eggs transform into the larval stage after eating after they move through this stage they start eating the mulberry leaves and grow to the fully formed larva stage when they are fully formed they stop eating the mulberry leaves and develop a for the so they give out they give out the saliva from its mouth it which wounds around its body and forms a and when it is exposed to the air it stiffens and forms the shape of a cocoon so this is a cocoon stage or pupa stage it is called as cocoon stage 
at this stage the worm is inside the cocoon inside the cocoon and uh, it stops eating the mulberry leaves at this stage so it develops a thread like structure around its body through the saliva that is, comes out from its mouth sticky substance that comes out from its mouth its worms around its body and due to the exposure of light and air so especially air it becomes strong and they are called as pattukayalu what are they called as children they are called as pattukayalu okay so these at this pupa stage itself you have to kill the larva that is the worm that is present inside the pupa should be killed otherwise this thread you cannot get it this is the silk thread from which you can make the silk fabrics okay if it transform into the adult stage what happens if the pupa stand forms into the adult stage in its life cycle it has four stages as i said after pupa stage it normally transforms into the adult stage if it transforms into the adult stage the silk thread that is formed it will not be continuous because the larva transforms into the adult piercing out of the body of the cocoon when it comes out the silk thread will be that is obtained will not be continuous so in order to get the continuous silk thread the larva present inside the cocoon is killed how it is killed the process of killing the larva inside the cocoon is called as stifling process now we'll see the stifling process and other process that goes on in the manufacture of the silk up to now you know what are the different stages of the silkworm silkworm undergoes four stages in its life cycle they are eggs larva pupa and adult stages we get silk at the pupa stage of the silkworm it releases the Uh, silk that is the uh, saliva from its mouth when it is exposed to the air it becomes uh, strong it normally feeds on mulberry leaves in the larval stage that you should know up to here next uh, how the silk is produced we'll see and the different process also we'll see you know should learn this diagram children okay see children in the manufacture of the silk the silkworm weavers generally undergo the stifling process what is stifling process the process of killing the larva inside the cocoon is called as stifling process what happens if this process is not done or how this process is done that we have to see in stifling process the larva that is the the cocoons are kept in a hot oven for about uh, 15 minutes in order to kill the cocoon that is the larva present inside the cocoon later the cocoons are tear shifted to the hot the boiling water in order to loosen the threads so the process of uh, obtaining the silk from the silk fab the from the cocoons is called as reeling process see children rearing of silk worms to obtain silk is called as sericulture what is sericulture so the silk worms are red why they are red to obtain the silk the process of obtaining silk from the silk worms is called as sericulture the process of killing the larva that is present inside the cocoon is called as stifling process the process of obtaining silk from the silk cocoons silk worm cocoons it is called as a reeling process do you understand children so in this stifling process i as i told you that the worms are been first they are steamed then boiled to loosen the fiber in the reeling and reeled over the reelers so reeling is done over twisters and or reelers they are also called as twisters or reelers on the reeling machines so in this pro by this process you the after reeling process the silk is been woven over the looms power looms hand looms or power looms to obtain the silk fabric in this manner the weavers normally they try to manufacture the silk from the silk fabric from the silk worms so hope you have understood about this now we'll move to the Uh, that is the woolen fabric before entering into the woolen fabric you should know so the different uh, cocoon the seed growing centers where they are in our state and in our and the cocoons where they are being sold so this states we'll see later we'll move to the woolen fabric okay children no doubt see here children big biggest seed growing center is it 
Harsley Hills Exeter district in they grow the silkworms mostly the silkworms we the growth is being mostly seen in west godavari district at hanuman junction so you should know the places where the silkworms are being uh, reared so you know the rearing of silkworms is called as sericulture sericulture is being carried on in various places of our state we'll see that so mostly in the west godavari of hanuman junction district of hanuman junction you can see that they get five to six harvests of worms every year they grow them okay so of from the silk worms you get the eggs mostly you find the eggs that is the, so eggs are being sold in this places of tadakapalli of anantapur district karnool district and other other districts like karnool kadapa and mahabubnagar also eggs are being sold okay children next coming to the plantation of mulberry plantation where the eggs transform into the larva stage larva you know that larva of silk moth normally feeds on mulberry leaves so the mulberry plantation you can see in palmaneru of chittur district and the whole process that is starting from the silk moth to the manufacture of the silk the process that uh, manufacture of the silk uh, the process goes on in palmaneru district of the chittur district and also you can find the cocoons they are that are being sold for the manufacture of silk in the places like hindupur madanapalli dharmavaram kadri raichoti and hyderabad too okay so the different types of silk fiber that is the fibers that are obtained we'll see now no down this so children within 2 to 3 weeks of the formation of cocoon the larva should be killed or otherwise it transforms to the adult stage and spoils the cocoon so that we cannot get the continuous silk thread and an average cocoon we get the thread from an average cocoon is about see here 1000 to 3000 feet how much children the thread from an average cocoon is 1000 to 3000 feet and about 2000 to 3000 cocoons are required to get 500 grams of silk so the different types of silk fabrics that we that they get the name from the places pochampalli dharmavaram banaras kanchipuram narayanpet and kottakota are the places from which we get the silk and the name also from the place we get okay and next varieties tasser zeri kosa and moga are the varieties of the silk next we move